Don't slurp. What? She's gonna slurp. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> hey everybody! Good morning. It is Sunday Live Hall Show, and uh, man, it is super early because usually we do this at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and right now it is 7 a.m. Pacific Time. And uh, but we're on the East Coast still. We are in technically right now we are in Cranston, Rhode Island. Cranston. Cranston. It is uh, 10 a.m. here, but we've got a lot of stuff that we have to do today, a lot of stuff scheduled. Um, and so this was like the only time we could really make it happen. So hopefully we have at least a few people watching live. I get that probably there's going to be a lot of people that won't be able to tune in. But um, if you're not Come watching, on. they don't want to get up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday to look Come at our yeah. shiny, cheery faces. Lorna was like, not happening. Yeah, not getting up at 7 a.m. It's OK. So, I get it. Thanks a lot, Lorna. Really? Yeah, we know what we're, kind of friend you are. <laughs> we know who our true friends are, okay? Yep. But, you know, home to visit in Rhode Island. This is my home. Uh, my, I lived here for 38 years, so lots of friends, lots of family, and lots of eating while we're here, and lots of um, stuff to do. We're spread super thin. I've been driving all over creation trying to spend time with people. Um, I'm fortunate. I have very, a lot of friends, a lot of family, and people that love me, and they want to meet Katie, and... Um, so it's been a great time, but a bazillion people I've met. We so are. Far. How many people have you hugged right now? Uh, I've hugged a lot of people. It's like she's a no. politician. She's like kissing babies and hugging. Yeah, people. And it's true. And I've eaten a lot of food. Like my body is like, what is happening right now? Because I've eaten like so much food. I've had a lot of beer. I'm not gonna lie. Um, people um, like to. Uh, yeah, you socialize around food. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Plus, we're just going around trying all the different kinds of food. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. Some of um, it, I'm like, no, this is not okay. Listen, I think she is being harsh about our New England foods. She does not like the willow tree chicken salad, as she calls it. It's okay. Chicken paste or the chicken, chicken pate. pate. <laughs> not what it is. Uh, I made her try a staple of Rhode Island the other day, uh, yesterday. Actually, it's called party pizza. It's like cold party pizza. And, okay, um, here, hold on, hold on a second. You guys, you guys, it is not pizza, okay? It is bread with sauce on it. It is basically, they take pizza dough, pizza crust, mm -hmm. and they do it square for one thing, which is obnoxious, because then there's like middle pieces that have no crust for you to hang on to. And again, it's sauce, right? So it's basically, basically it's like marinara sauce spread on the pizza. Mm -hmm. It's cold, okay? Which I'm mm -hmm. okay with cold pizza sometimes, if it has cheese on it, okay? So this is square pizza. You, if you eat a middle piece, you've got like sauce all over your hands. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you've heard about this before, but there is an urban legend that at some point, I don't know, hundreds of years ago, Spain had a king who had a lisp. <laughs> okay, now just bear with me here. Spain had a king who had a lisp, and so everyone was directed to speak with a lisp as well, which is why people who speak Spanish from Spain say, Barcelona, they say gracias, and they speak with a lisp, okay? So here's my theory. Is this a fact? No, I said it's an urban legend. Oh, okay. There's like no, there's like nothing like really backing up. But that's like the legend is like, that's why, because seriously, if you, if somebody who speaks Spanish who's from like, let's say Mexico or somewhere in South America, they don't, they don't do the lisp. But from Spain, it's like they say, they literally say like, I've, I've, I've heard. heard. Okay. Yeah. So my theory is back, let's say, I think it was like probably in the 50s. Now, this is just my theory. I've been working on it. Back in the 50s. The mayor of Providence had a son who was lactose intolerant. <laughs> this is about the fourth theory she yeah. has come up with. He had a son who was lactose intolerant. So they basically started making party pizza with no cheese on it. And then they forced all the kids to uh, eat it. And they told them it was good. And then they did the same to their kids and to their kids. And for some reason, it's been... Uh. I don't know, almost 80 years and nobody's figured out you can put cheese on it now. Okay? Listen, we have regular pizza like everybody else. We have it's not pizza. Really pizza. This is party pizza. It's, I don't, all right, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> Monica <laughs> Wagner, if you are watching this, I know you know what I'm talking about, girlfriend, because she's from Rhode Island. So um, I know she's had party pizza. I'm just and saying, they as well to, as any of my friends, they forgot to put this. the toppings on. They forgot to put the cheese on it. Okay? It's not pizza. Rude. She's yeah. rude. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. No, she's not, not okay. a she's not a fan of a lot of the Rhode Island delicacies, mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. 
I've had some really good food. Like we went to Newport and they had like this uh, seafood pizza that was like the most magical thing I've ever eaten in my life. That and, was really good. And that pizza had some cheese on it. Okay. It had a lot of cheese on it. All right. Beginning of news says party pizza sounds like a texture nightmare. <laughs> You know, it's okay. It's like it's serviceable. Like if you're hungry and it's sitting there, like it's not like it's gross. It's yummy. It's a, it's a staple. It is a staple at every birthday party, gathering, baby shower, graduation, everything since I can remember. It's just, and it's not just my family, okay? It's a Rhode Island staple. Yeah. Don't insult my people. I talked to a lot of people this week. You did. And there were some people who were from Rhode Island and they said, eh, eh didn't like it either. Actually, none of the people from Rhode Island said they didn't like it that I can recall. It was pretty much people that were transplanted from other states. So Whatever. take that back. Whatever. Ridiculous. So I'm drinking my coffee out of the Las Vegas Starbucks mug. Yeah. yeah. It's my nod to home. Bonnie Davis is out of sugar and can't have a morning brew. Seriously, like that's happened to me when you don't have like your cream or whatever you need. It's really sad and depressing. Here's the thing. While I've been here, I've been kind of lacking in the coffee department because... It's like everybody has Dunkin' Donuts, so it's Dunkin' Donuts everywhere. And again, we talked about coffee before. I don't like Dunkin' Donuts. I lived in New York City for two years. I couldn't understand why nobody likes good coffee. They just like it watery. As my sister says, Victoria likes to tie a string around a bead and dip it in some hot water. And that's like her taste in coffee. So I like it weak. But like I like my beer. Yeah. When I drink beer, I like cheap domestic yeah. watery beer. <laughs> I did I did buy some cold brew at the grocery store and I was having that. It was okay. Um, I like the stuff we have at home because it's concentrated. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm just drinking pure coffee. So it's just kind of like, it's it's just barely enough to get me through the day. And I've been super tired too because we have been going nonstop and like staying up till like one, two in the morning every night and then getting up early. So whew, we're gonna be worn out by the time we get home. I always am. But mm -hmm. this time I get to wear you out too. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, we did do some thrifting this week. Mm -hmm. The first few days we were here, we were able to hit a few stores. Um, I do still have a sourcing video that I need to edit together. Maybe I'll be able to do it tonight because I think this is the first night in a long time since we've been here that we're actually going to be home at a decent hour and we're just going to be hanging out here. So I will be editing that together so we have some fun footage from that. That should go up tonight, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, we did go to a few stores. I think we went to... Um, we mainly just went to a couple of Savers and a couple of Salvation Armies, right? Yeah, I think we went to four stores. Yeah. And so I found a couple of really good things at the Salvation Armies Army here. Um, one of the Savers was kind of, man, I didn't really find anything good. And then we went to um, a Savers, the last one place that we went to, because she was finding stuff like crazy. Like she got so much good stuff. Um, but we have a theory about uh, this area. We don't think that there's anybody really buying to sell around here. It just doesn't seem like it. Because I don't some think of the there's stuff... a lot of thrifting being done here. Not clothing, shoes, and stuff like that. To I flip. Just, yeah, to flip. I just don't think that's happening a yeah. lot here. There so if you're in the so New England area stuff. and you you should like come into this area mm -hmm. and like the Warwick area and like actually just yeah. go in some of the stores because she was finding a lot of women's clothing. I wasn't finding as much. The last Savers we went to, I did find a whole bunch of stuff. But the uh, but she was finding like a lot of like really high end women's brands, and she's going to show some of the stuff to you as obviously today. And I had to leave some stuff behind because seriously, we were taking a whole crap load of stuff yeah. home and shipping stuff home, and and uh, which is great. But some stuff, it, I I was surprised that it, a lot of it was still on the racks. Like when I lived here, I've been doing this a long time. When I lived here, I didn't thrift. I didn't go into thrift stores. I didn't buy clothing and shoes. I didn't flip that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I did all antiques and collectibles, which there is a bazillion about here. Yeah but I wasn't going to be shipping home antiques and collectibles. So, um, I, you know, now I thrift cause that's what I do in Vegas. Cause that's what there's a way more of. So I was looking at it with new eyes being here because yeah. I had not done that before. Um, so it was kind of cool. Uh, we found, we did, we found a lot of, a lot of stuff. Well, and we found stuff like at Salvation Army, that was 50% off day. Yep. And the way it's set up, like they, anything that has come in like that week is a specific color cause they change the colors every week. Mm -hmm. And so that stuff's not on sale. Um, and that's, I think, the only thing that's excluded. Right. Uh, so I found some stuff that was, like, I got 50% off of. And I'm like, there's no way in other markets, yeah. like in the Vegas area, Me that too. that would have lasted more than a week at the regular price. It wouldn't have lasted a day. Right. So, uh, so yeah. So if you live around here, if you're in distance. If you're like, in Massachusetts or any part of Rhode Island or even, like, uh, southern, southeastern Connecticut, 
I would definitely come and check out some of um, the Savers and uh, Salvation Armies around here. And we didn't even go to Goodwills, and we didn't. We only no, hit, we didn't. We, we only hit two of the uh, of the Salvation Armies. But if it's any indication, yeah. I mean, they're older ones. They're a little rundown, a little grungy. But what was on the racks was pretty good. I mean, Salvation Army back where we live is like, eh. But Salvation Army here was pretty good. So yeah, it was, Salvation Army is like one of those weird ones where it's like it just depends. So I miss. love, 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 love the ones that are in Oregon. Like I, that's the one thing I was really sad about. And just probably like a month before I left Oregon was when they switched over to where the new stuff wasn't on sale. But before that, I would go every single Wednesday because even the stuff that came in like that day, they would like like go for fifty percent off. So I found stuff like I was there all yeah. the time. But it's like one of those random weird places where it depends on where you're at. Although that one in Victorville is like our favorite. Yep, because it's just like kind of one. a rundown. A uh, sketchy place and it's kind of messy, um, but we always find like really, really good stuff mm -hmm. there. Uh, Bonnie says that she found a Herve Ledger bandage dress. Her bandage. Ledger. I don't know. Bandage dress in the bins on Friday. I don't know. Is that like a really high end brand? Yeah. And then she, and then she ruined, ruined it by steaming it. it. Uh, I've done That's why I don't steam anything. I've washed something before that was like a really good like jacket, and I had it like bleed everywhere. And I forget mm -hmm. it. I, if it if it looks too wrinkled, I kind of like try to smooth it out with my hands. That's fine. Yeah, or I'll throw it in. A, you know, I'll throw it in the dryer with a damp towel just to try and get most of the wrinkles out. I mean, yeah, you should look into like what um, kind of dry cleaning you have in your area because we have uh, cleaners that it's like what it costs a couple bucks. Yeah, they just clean. raised the price from a dollar ninety five to two twenty five a garment, and that includes blazers, suit jackets. Yeah. It's not that bad. It's and, a really and nice. actually like even like lightweight regular jackets. It's, yeah. They won't do um big, Ours won't heavy do leather jackets or, like or leather, but I mean almost everything some places two do. bucks. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a high-end thing and you're like scared to like, oh, yeah. like that, like I dry cleaned a black label um polo, you know, Ralph Lauren overcoat that I had paid like fifteen dollars for. I dry cleaned it for two dollars. I think I sold it for like four hundred dollars. It's a while ago, but Two dollars for dry cleaning can't beat that. Yeah, not too. Shabby. And I hate ironing, even if it's a high end dress shirt or a dress. I'm gonna dry clean it for two bucks. It'll yeah. look beautiful. All right, so, all right. Want to get into? Let's get into it, so you guys. If our energy's a little low today, I'm telling you. I know. You. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm like <laughs> the last two. The last two days, we've actually um, come home and taken like an hour power nap before going back out. Because seriously, it's like we're yesterday we had like two kids parties. And it's like each party we're staying at for like a few hours and then we like had to come home take a nap and then go back out and uh so we've had like tons of fun but man like my energy levels yeah. are like we got to bed at like 1 30 last night i woke up at 5 30 and i was like oh no i don't think i'm gonna be able to get back to sleep and i was like really worried i was gonna have to go another day on four hours i fell asleep for a couple more hours so anyway uh oh beginning news says i just spent a hundred dollars to dry clean 80 high-end men's hawaiian shirts that's, that's pretty good that's, that's worth it i think that's yeah. well worth it you think about the cost you just add two dollars on your cost to the item like that's not a big deal at all mm -hmm. um anyway so we're going to go ahead and show you as usual we're going to go through and show you some things that we sold this last week i think you guys are going to be super stoked to see some of the cool she had like a crazy big sale i did i saved that one i had a good sale um for like your last one to share because it's uh it's pretty exciting she actually did an auction you guys I know I never do auctions. Anymore. Yep, it was exciting. I never do auctions either, but there's certain things where it's a good idea. I'm really glad I talked about. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I've got kind of a two computer system going on here, so we're going to see. Yeah, we do only have the laptop. We're not quite set up the way we are at home, so yeah. Let's so so see if I can do the screen share a little different correctly and not. Um, I guess I'm going to have to share it here, and it's going to look funky. But hold on a second here. Share. Hit on over here. Okay, that should be working. Okay. Let us know that you can see the screen. We're starting off with the Nintendo GameCube, so let me know that you can see it because um, I can't look to see what's going on. Uh, but this is the first one that Victoria sold this last week. You want to talk about that? Sure. Uh, picked this up at a garage sale maybe about a month ago or so, um, and it sold while on sale for, I paid $5 at the garage sale for this big box of dirty, dusty controllers, and there was a couple of games, and um game system so we just tested the game system itself and plugged in the controllers to make sure all the lights worked and uh there was a game actually in this so i um uh, i was able to test and make sure it saved and all that stuff um so yeah i mean it's tested it's working it, and um sold it for 97 dollars um free shipping but it is small enough that that's going to fit into like a large flat rate probably i didn't see what state it sold to but so sold for $97, it's going to cost me, you know, about 10 for shipping somewhere. 
perfect. And this one was like, it was like really dirty and stuff. Like you had to, it was, I had to do a lot of cleaning. Really like I got in there with like Q-tips and stuff like that. It was really dusty. It was like someone threw it in their garage and left it on the floor. And yeah. That's why they sold the whole box for five bucks. But for five bucks, I was willing to take the risk and see if it worked. Even if it hadn't worked, I would have sold it for parts. Yeah. That was a really good sale. All right. So I'm going to go with my first one. Now this one isn't like a big sale. I only, um, I did a best offer. I think I sold it for $24, but I wanted to show you because this is one that I shared when I got it. I was kind of talking about, you know, vintage t-shirts. This is a tank top and especially stuff that has like animals on it. Um, I think Christina was the one who like commented on um, science. It's science ones. That's what well, this one's like. yeah. Well, there was like, it's like the Hawaiian names of, um, yeah, but it's a fish in, like in a Hawaii. But what's funny is that this one, I don't know why it says the fishes of Kauai because um, fish is plural, plural. Mm -hmm. but whatever. Anyway, this was a vintage t-shirt. I think I paid like maybe a dollar or two for it. And again, like I will do these kind of lower um, price point flips uh, when it comes to t-shirts um, and because it's like, it's super fast to photograph and measure and list when you do a whole bunch in a row. Um, and so I don't mind buying a t-shirt and flipping it for only 25, 24, $25. Um, a lot of times I kind of hover around 25 to $30 for most of my vintage t-shirts. And this is one you can see on the tag. It says made in Mexico of USA fabric. So as I've said to you guys before, um, that right there is a good indication. It's probably like mid to late nineties. Um, so I sold that and I was pretty stoked about it. I think that just cool. sold today. So, all right, let's go to your next one. Okay, so adding machines. Um, you guys might not be looking at these. They're the, you know, bulky, uh, but for people that do accounting and people that do like payroll or HR or, or just people that are creatures of habit, this is the type of thing that you use all the time. We use them on our desks. I mean, I used to do mortgages and I used to use them all the time. And um, they're just, it's a, being a creature of habit. You've got your, your tape where it prints out. You can check if you have a, a, make a mistake. It's very different than trying to use a calculator or a calculator system um, you know, on your computer. So a lot of people still use these for, for various reasons. I always buy them. If they're under $5, I always buy them. This particular one, I paid $2 for at a garage sale. It came with its own box, it with cord. I tested it, it worked fine. Um, and I, it sold for $60. Again, free shipping, but this will fit in a flat rate depending on where it's going. Um, it'll fit in a flat rate mailer, a flat rate box, sorry. And um, yeah, I mean, this was one of the higher end ones. Some of them don't sell for a heck of a lot. You always wanna try to put the, uh, the model number in and check what the model mm -hmm. number is. But I mean, I usually sell them for at least 30 to 40 and usually you can get them real cheap. Yeah, and, you're, and I was just gonna say, um, that's the great thing about electronics is generally you can see like a serial number and a model number and it should be really easy to look it up. And in this case, you even have like the, looks like the manual for it. That's the box. That's the box. Yeah, original box. Um, but you're able to see this is 1020 PD. I'm sure it probably says that somewhere on the back here as well. Somewhere. Um, but anyway, it should be super easy to like look it up really quick and look for comps. So um, I don't do hard goods, but there, there definitely is a huge market for electronics. Yeah, and I just, like I said, adding machines, uh, I love electronics, I love vintage electronics. I just, they're so easy to sell and the ROI on them is so good. But this one happened to be one of the better ones. I've sold, I think, three or four adding machines in the past few months. Mm -hmm. So not, this was the highest highest one though. Crazy. Okay. All right, my next one, again, this is like a lower sale, uh, but I think I took an offer for $32. But what I wanted to talk about is that with Polo, Ralph Lauren, um, Polo shirts, overall, like they don't sell for a whole lot. I mean, there's so many of them out there. It really depends on the specific style or like the patterns on them. Um, just your average regular polo shirt, even the vintage ones, it's like maybe if they're just like solid color, it's like maybe you can get $15 for them and they sell for really cheap. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really not worth getting most of the time. But the reason I picked this one up is it was kind of interesting. It's got the, it's got a zip collar. Um, and then also uh, the pattern on it, it's got this um, stripe, this, this vintage, it almost hurts my eyes to look at it. Um, this, uh, this stripe pattern like this is very popular with the vintage shirts. So like if you're looking at like Guess or um, I don't know what some other brands are, uh, but it's just a very popular like style, like the stripes on it. So mm -hmm. I picked it up and I sold it for $32. Um, I think I paid maybe a couple bucks for it. It actually has a whole um, back by the tag, uh, you can see that right there. So um, the fact that I was able to still sell it for $32 is pretty great. Um, it was really nice soft cotton. 
Um, but yeah, so again, just because it's polo Ralph Lauren doesn't mean it's going to sell for huge amounts. And for the most part, you can pass up on the polo shirts, but kind of pay attention, go and look at, um, polo Ralph Lauren, vintage polo shirts, uh, look at solds and, um, sort them by highest price. And you'll get an idea of like what the ones look like that people are actually paying big money for. Um, because otherwise you're just going to be kind of wasting your money if you're like going and buying a lot of polo shirts. Now, if you find like a whole lot of them, that's where you can actually make like an okay amount of money. Like, let's say you go out and you find like a whole bunch of larges that are all only like a buck a piece um, and you lot them up. That's like a good way to like make a yeah. decent amount of money. Um, but just yeah. individual selling ones and <laughs> selling items like items in two groups of two, three or four is actually, um, a really good way to maximize your money. Um, you know, you might sell them, you, you know, sell them for a buck, of, you know, buy them for a buck a piece and then sell four of them for $60, which doesn't seem like, you know, a huge ROI individually, but when you, mm -hmm. 60 bucks, you can still ship them for, you know, yep. all together really inexpensively. So, um, and also they send, tend to be pretty high in the search results on eBay. For whatever reason, eBay is favoring and customers are favoring lots again. It used to be something that was popular years ago and it had kind of fallen out of favor, but now uh, it seems to be popular again. Too. Yeah. Bundles, bundles of two and three. Yeah. I, for the most part, I don't do it, but I will very, very rarely. Um, looks like Violet Lemon was able to actually get a notification. The show starts. So she's here with us. Woohoo! Woo and Jessica, how's it going, Jessica? Apparently she says you're such a good sport. I'm assuming she's talking about me harassing you. Um, I tried. Depends <laughs> on the day. Sometimes she's a bit much. <laughs> a bit much, as my grandma would say. Okay. So next one, Victoria. Um, so I talked last week uh, about vintage games and how much I really like vintage games. So this was one that sold right before we left. It actually sold the day before we left. We left on Tuesday and it sold Monday night. I packaged it up real quick and sent it out, even though I had already changed my handling time just so I could get it out the door. Uh, I had paid $3 for this. It was in its original box, 1969 uh, toss across. It was in... Um, perfect condition, had all the pieces and all the little beanie bags with it. So I sold this, I uh, shipped it in its original box. I did not double box it. I just poly, because the box is not in fantastic condition. Had it been mint or something like that, and that would have been an entirely different uh, conversation. But because it wasn't mint and it's super heavy cardboard, it's like that really thick, like double walled cardboard. I, I didn't want to add any more weight to it. I just poly bagged it. Uh, and threw a label on it and it happened to be going to California. So I did have free shipping, but the shipping was like $9 and change. So I was, I was pretty lucky yeah. on that. I do that with my shoes too. When I sell shoes that come in their box, I just put them in a poly bag because it's like, I don't want to add any weight. I don't want to add any bulk because a lot of times with shoes, I can send them cubic priority and save money. So, um, that's why if you don't have like really big poly bags, you definitely should be trying to get your hands on some because, uh, eBay really needs to get some bigger poly yeah. bags. I actually they're, had to cut a couple and got gotcha. them together. Yeah, their their biggest big. poly bag for the most part works for me. I can put pretty big jackets in them. Um, but yeah, it would be nice if they had like a bigger yeah, size. I like it. I, I we need bigger things for this for um, bigger jackets for blankets. I, I would really like bigger ones. Um, I if I list a lot, I it depends on how much room I have in the title. I sometimes will put a lot. Sometimes I'll put bundles. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll put both. Yeah. So. Big Drift Thrift, Allison in Alaska is watching us. It is like, it's not even 6.30 in the morning for her. I like to call it um, Big Drift Thrift time because Alaska's got like their own little time zone. Uh, but nice, get you some coffee. Seriously, you are up early. Plush at Johnson, first time catching the live show. So yeah, I was thinking like, I was hoping that us having it at a different time, maybe some people that don't normally get to watch the live show would be able to tune in. So yeah. awesome. Welcome, everybody. We will not be continuing this time frame. Just no, <laughs> no, we won't. We won't. And I can see we have fewer people, which I, I assumed would be the case. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to just get a show out there anyway. So, okay. So my next one is uh, this, uh, this basically, like I call it a rockabilly shirt. It's kind of like a Harrington jacket. Now, this brand is actually um, kind of a, a pinup rockabilly brand. Uh, it's called, I talked about it before. With the, yeah. Yeah, with a bowling shirt I was selling. Yeah, so steady, last call, um, made in the U.S. Uh, it is, it's not vintage, as you can see, steadyclothing.com. Um, but this style is super popular. Rockabilly is like super popular right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously, it's been a style that's been around for a very long time, but it is um, right now seeing a resurgence, and uh, it's just super, super big. So um, anything like this, 
even without the stripe, now this has like the cool racing stripe on it, which I think makes it even uh, more desirable. But even without the stripe, uh, for instance, um, when I buy, when I pick up like Dickies jackets that are similar to this, um, mm -hmm. that have like the fold down collar, uh, you'll say like mechanics jacket, that kind of the, that workwear kind of jacket, but it's basically the same style as this. Um, ooh, I'm getting some offers. I know, I'm watching. You've had three since I started the show for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, best offer, you'll notice almost everything that I sold, um, that I'm showing you guys that I sold, have all been best offers, and they've all been very close to the amount that I um, have it priced at. Uh, I've talked about this before. I price all my stuff to where I would be happy getting 50% of my, my original price. Um, and so I'll have something on sale. So for instance, this was on 40% off, but then I got an offer. I actually sold this for $80. Um, so I was very happy with that price. Um, is that another offer or is that just popping up again? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so so yeah, so make sure you're putting rockabilly into your title as a keyword because mm -hmm. people really do look for that. Um, and you know, again, Dickies jackets, like those Dickies jackets, and even those uh, is it Red Cap that does mm -hmm. the um, yeah, like the it's like the it's uniform. like Dickie jackets. They're it's kind of similar. like Dickies, very similar style. Those ones don't underprice them. Like you'll see, a lot of people don't really know about the whole rockabilly angle of it. Don't underprice them because they really can sell for a decent amount. A good Dickies jacket is made like in the 90s. I can sell for 50, 60 bucks sometimes. Yeah. So it just depends. And um, they're like 100 new, which is weird, but they do sell. I sell them too. Yeah, yeah. I sold it. I sold one this week. And I come across those all the time. This is the first time I've actually picked up this brand, um, but it's a really cool jacket. And again, I sold it for 80 bucks. So I was super stoked about that. All right, let's go to your next one. Okay. So this is one of those where I actually used a stock photo because it is... Um, like pretty hard to see how this looks on a person or mm -hmm. even on a mannequin without the stock photo. Um, this is one of the things that I actually picked up when we were outsourcing with Teresa, the, yeah. um, Teresa Cox, the head leader of our boss group. Um, we did a little dabbling in original I was arbitrage. doing a little dabbling. We were at TJ Maxx, I believe I got this. It was new with tags. Uh, Lily Pulitzer, had I known that um, I wish they had had more. We actually, I caught them out of the corner of my eye as we were leaving that there were more. Yeah, um, we were the Marshalls on, was um, it Marshalls? on the strip. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I paid $29.99 for this um, there. I don't. I know I didn't pay any more. Um, so I paid, 20, I paid a little bit up for it, but I knew that it would, you know, it sells, it's Lily. Um, and it's a small one. So the retail on it was $178. I sold for what you see there, the $109.46. And uh, shipped it out. Super light. Went first class. Nice. So that was my one of my attempts at retail arbitrage. <laughs> you did good. All right. So my next one, um, I almost never sell women's clothing. I don't usually buy it to sell it. Um, this particular one, I was. it was actually when I was still in Oregon. Um, and I don't know why. I think I just happened to go look at I think there was another jacket that was on the women's rack as I was walking by that I happened to look at. And I saw this. And it was just a really cool like um, tuxedo style. Um, you sent me a message when you found that. Yeah, I actually sent I actually sent Vicky a message and I was like, what do you think about this? Um, is this worth picking up? I believe I paid 20 for it. Um, and so I bought it and it's a really cool tuxedo style uh, dress coat. Um, it is in really, really nice, nice condition. It's uh, vintage Brooks Brothers. Let me see if I can show you the tag. Uh, made in the USA. Um, so I went ahead and got this. And here's the interesting thing about this. Now, speaking of, I think I mentioned this uh, in our show on Wednesday, we were talking about free returns. Um, this one, before I had the free returns, I sold it for, I believe I took an offer for $100, uh, sent it out. It ended up not being quite what the woman wanted. So she returned it. She At that time, I was doing buyer paid returns. So she paid to, to return it to me. Um, this jacket, it's very small and lightweight. I was able to fit it in a padded flat rate mailer. So it wasn't super expensive to ship anyway. She sent it back. I posted it again. And uh, then I think I sold it for 110 the last time. So I sold it for a little bit more, sent it out, had free returns. Again, wasn't quite what the buyer wanted. They sent it back. This time I paid for the return shipping. So I listed it a third time. And this time I got an offer for $175. And so I sent that out. And I mean, I've made back any money that I had to spend on shipping and return shipping, mm -hmm. um, sold it for way more than I originally had sold it for. So that's just kind of goes to show you that, you know, yeah, you're going to have to deal with returns sometimes, particularly if you're selling women, women's clothing, because something like this, it's like, you don't know how it's going to look on you once you get it. It's not like buying a t-shirt if you're a dude or, you know, a pair yeah, of shoes. It's like, tough. So, you know, it's like once they put it on, they're like, ah, it's not really working for me. It's going to happen, but don't worry because a lot of times you can sell it for a lot more.
All right, let's go to, oh, this is the big one, guys. You guys ready for this? Da -da -da. So I talked about this actually, I think last week on our haul video that I had picked up a ton, 960 something to be exact, of Girl Scout patches at Savers. They were in about 10 little bags on the wall, those little, that bagged wall of, of crap. And the bags were each $1.99 and it was 25% off day. So I think I paid between $10 and $15 for all of these. I took them home, I spread them all out, I, I put all the like ones together. Now granted, these are not the most fantastic pictures because once I sorted them all out and realized how many there actually were, I was like, I am not moving these and doing this over again. <laughs> so the so one time a, you'll see Victoria break ever, the rule, putting I, not I, only on the floor, but on the carpet. <laughs> yeah, they were on the carpet in my office. I was like, forget it. There's just too many. It took me forever to sort them out. So basically I just, I took the photos the way they were. And you know, I don't re recommend doing that, but once in a while, hey, it is what it is. So I took them, I really didn't know. They retail for like between two to $5 a piece. They were all new. They're not vintage. So mm -hmm. vintage Girl Scout patches are the ones that really sell for uh, the most um, overall because they're collectible, uh, collectible. But I figured someone would buy these that might sell them themselves. Like I'm not gonna sell 900 items at two or $3 a piece. Mm -hmm. Heck no, I don't have the time, I don't care. I have $10 invested in this. So I basically said, I'm just gonna throw them in auction. I really don't know. I started them in auction at $99, thinking I'd be perfectly happy to accept $99 on a $10 investment. So what was your buy it now? My buy it now, I actually put a buy it now on there because like, I know I don't like auctions that much anymore. Um, I don't like to wait for something. So I figured, well, if somebody really wants it, they'll just buy it now. My buy it now, I actually just, so, so I paid that extra little fee. The buy it now was $2.99 and, um, Within 24 hours, they were up over $200, and they ended up selling for $461. Crazy. I did sell it to a buyer that um, has a store selling Girl Scout patches. So she's someone that sells everything for anywhere from $3 to $5 a piece plus $3 shipping. She's not a top-rated seller, so my guess is that the person um, just puts a stamp on it in an envelope and sends it instead of doing upload mm -hmm. and tracking, which good for her because I wouldn't either. You know, At that price point, why yeah. bother? So she's probably making four to five dollars profit on every single one. There are nine hundred and something of them. If there's she wants to do work. the long haul, it's a lot of work. But there's also a lot of multiples. But um, it's a lot of work to do it. But if she wants to do the long haul on that, she's going to make six, seven thousand dollars on that lot. So that's definitely worth yeah. a four hundred dollar investment for somebody else, not for me. So I sold it for four sixty one. Shipped in a medium flat rate box. Um, in my listing, uh, the listing itself took me well over half an hour plus the sorting and writing. It probably took me two hours to put this listing together because I actually listed every single one mm -hmm. and what they were and how many. Um, so it was it was a good listing. Yeah. But I think that helped me get it was money for, for sure. Now, here's the so. thing, though, because you had probably four or five different bidders. But there were only two that actually went up into the higher amounts. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine, like, if she, had there only been the one person, you might have only sold it for maybe a couple hundred dollars. Right. Um, so that's which the thing I would have been fine. Which with. would have been great. But that's the thing about auctions is it's like it only takes two that are really fighting each other out. But if you don't find that second person. I'm pretty um, sure they were both patch sellers, too, which is yeah, fine. probably because it's like there were a couple other people that were in it up until like it hit just about 200. And then the other two kind of took off and and really bid each other up. Um, so yeah, so that was an awesome sale. So Allison, I didn't get up early to watch the Royal Wedding, but I'm up watching you two because it's important. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. The Royal <laughs> Wedding, I, I watched the replay, I didn't get up either. But uh, <laughs> and we did go to a birthday party that was Royal Wedding themed yesterday for a 12 year old girl and it was pretty fun. We had fascinators on and yeah, it was and Katie wore a top hat and, and had a monocle. <laughs> it was cute, we had fun. It was fun. All right, my last one, uh, I wanted to show this because I just thought that was, this was super cool. So um, Perry Ellis, America stuff, um, it generally doesn't sell for as high as, like, let's say, like Tommy Hilfiger or stuff like that, but I got this jacket because it was such a huge, like, embroidered back, big spell out. I bought it, so I think I paid, like, I don't know, maybe five bucks for it, something like that. Um, it was only up for, I think I listed it, like, the night before we left, so the day before mm -hmm. we left. And while we were in the airport, um, it sold for the, the full price of the sale, so $83.99. Um, and what was cool, though, was when I saw the address it's going to, it's actually going to New York City 
and it's going to the Perry Ellis headquarters. So I'm assuming it's probably somebody that works maybe in their design department, or maybe it's maybe, I mean, sometimes they have archives of just um, mm -hmm. different designs that they've had over the years. And maybe for some reason they were missing this one, or maybe they're doing some redesigns um, and they're doing some like throwbacks to some of their older designs and they needed this one. Whatever the reason is, they paid $84 to basically get their own jacket back. Um, and That's I always, fun. those sales are always really super cool. I've done that before. So I think we've all, I'm not even all of us, but we've all sold to, like I sold a pair of vintage Genko jeans to Genko uh, <laughs> themselves. I've sold, I've sold a few times. I've sold, uh, oh goodness, uh, Michael Kors. I sold uh, the designer for Michael Kors, a vintage, it wasn't Michael Kors himself, but someone that works in the design department, I sold a vintage uh, handbag to. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm thinking it's probably somebody that they, they buy to to get inspired for new designs, I think. Right. So I think it's fun. It's very fun. All right, I think I stopped sharing. I think you did. I'm not seeing the screen, the other screen change over, but it's on a little bit of a delay. Yay, there, there we are. are. Okay, just wanted to make sure um, since I don't have it set up quite like I have at home. But that's all the stuff, the kind of highlights of the things that we sold over the last week. I will say, you know, we're doing the, um, we extended our handling time rather mm -hmm. than um, going on, actually going on vacation. Now again, remember guys, if you ever go on vacation, if you use the vacation setting um, with your store, you always have to also change your handling time. Mm -hmm. It does not do it for you automatically. I'm only seeing this again because in case you didn't see our last show, um, it's really important you do that. I've seen so many times sellers um, thinking that, you know, I mean, it, it seems like it would do it it's automatically. Logical. It's logical. Yes, yeah. it seems like it would, but uh, and then they, they go on vacation, they put their store on vacation, and then they all of a sudden they get this thing, you know, they get an order and then it says your shipment's late, and then they freak out. Um, so yeah, go on vacation, change your handling. Mm -hmm. We didn't go on vacation, we just changed our handling time, so our sales have definitely slowed down. Plus, oh yeah, yeah plus we have about 50%. Yeah, plus we haven't been able to do as much listing as we were hoping to. We'll probably get a couple hours of work in today, mm -hmm. um, but we've gone a number of days without listing anything, um, which yeah, we our, were hoping to do our more. Our two but, and two, did you even do your two and two posts the past couple I days? didn't, the last two days I haven't been able to do it, but sorry guys. Um, I will try to get one up today because I do want to make sure people are able to stay motivated. But yeah. sometimes life happens and you really just can't do it. It is really hard to do. We have not had an hour at home that was yeah. not spent at home. I say home, but we're at my, my best friend's house. Uh, an hour at home that was not spent sleeping or showering. I mean, that's, oh, seriously, it's it's been a little hectic. Now she knows this is what I do every time I come home. Mm -hmm. But that's all to say that um, even with extending our handling time, uh, I don't think our sales have been terrible. Like, yeah, they've definitely slowed down. We're probably operating at about 50%. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. About 50%. But we're still selling. Better than nothing. I've got like 23 things right now that are going to have to be shipped out on Wednesday. I have 18. It's going to be more than that, obviously, by the time we hit Wednesday. Um, but if we totally went on vacation and shut everything down, it's like we'd have zero. Be even less. So we'd have zero. I mean, people can still order when you're on vacation, I think. But oh, I think they can. Yeah, because that's why they get late shipment. Oh, okay. It's just that it says on it, it's like this big thing, and I think people are less likely to order. Yeah, a lot of times your sales just go screech to a halt. So, anyway, um, Rita Z says, just subscribed to your channel last week. How many apps? How many apps were you using for eBay? I'm not sure I completely understand your question, Rita. So, um, if you could clarify that. Yeah, for um, sure. If, if you mean any type of listing apps or anything like that, neither one of us do. We just yeah. um, we list directly to eBay. Yeah. So, all right. So now we're going to get into our haul. We got some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Do you want to start? Do you want me to start? What do you, how do you want to do this? Do you want to start with my, the pictures of the... Oh yeah, so I'm going to share the screen again one. really quick, guys. Um, let me switch over here to one of these things that she got is way too big for us to be <laughs> trying to show here. And plus, they're already on their way um, back home because you mm -hmm. have to ship them. So uh, I'm going to go and share the screen again here. And pop back on over here. All right. Yeah. So basically what I did, there's a couple of pictures here. Um, my cousin decided to get rid of her vintage Barbie um, collection. And rather than throw it in a garage sale, she's like, do you want this? Can you make some money off of it? So I gave her a little bit of money for it. But knowing that, this is real early uh, 80s Barbie, you know, a couple like cuspers, like 79, 1980 themselves, 81, 82, nothing older than that. Um, so real good Barbie stuff, good collectible Barbie stuff. Most Barbie items, just for the record, are not worth very much at all. They're, they're virtually worthless. Anything past mid-80s. Occasionally you'll find a, a Bob Mackie collector 
that's that's in good shape that's worth more than five to ten bucks but these i've got some every single one almost every single thing has the original box it has all the little teeny tiny pieces they're all in great condition i've got some original clothing items from the 80s that are still in their package um, there's only a few dolls but they're mostly right here i've got an original gem in her box with all of her outfit um, but the thing is, is that, okay, these boxes are not real big. They're not real heavy, but obviously I'm not putting them in a suitcase. So this is pretty big. This is the original McDonald's drive through McDonald's thing. That camper is ridiculous big. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the little Barbie safari jeeper and it's got the trailer and mm -hmm. horses and uh, a couple of new in box things. Anyway, so I paid whatever I paid for that. Um, and I shipped it home in four huge cases yeah. using my FedEx account. It cost me $200 to ship everything home. Um, but it'll be there on Friday. We get home on Wednesday and I'll be ready to start listing. But that will after I reassemble everything for you. <laughs> yes, because we did have to take a few things apart. What you don't see in the photographs, um, there is the original Barbie Dream House and the original Barbie Dream Pool, which are two enormous pieces. Mm -hmm. But our on the fairly rare side and most people will not ship them. I should have taken photographs beforehand because we're going to take them apart to ship them again to I, revise I, them. I, I didn't uh, think of that. That wasn't really I, right. probably, I am probably going to be full of regret because I was the one that took everything apart. I mean, we've kept all the pieces together for each thing, but there's definitely going to be some, some uh, puzzling things back together. Yes. But so it was still worth the investment and there's a lot of things to ship. Um, I should do still do very well on the items. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited about that. I, I did not anticipate buying that much crap to send home. I will be honest, but <laughs> I'm kind of excited about it. Okay. So read his question to get back to what apps do we use mm. like Sizely shipping app for insurance, et cetera. Uh, we both use Sizely now. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a pretty easy, it's not really an app or is it an app? Well, I mean, it's like, I think I get what she's saying. She's saying like how many third party software or third party companies are we using? Gotcha. Uh, so we definitely use, uh, I've been using Sizely for a couple of years and now Sizely is our sponsor for a boss up in the list live show. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love Sizely and she just started using it. It's finally, I really like it. Yeah. Asking her about it. Uh, we do use multiple, um, uh, shipping companies because eBay for the most part will use eBay sometimes if we have to do um, international uh, shipments that um, we need additional insurance on because you can't insure first class. Uh, first class through eBay so I use ShipSaver for that I think you do as well I use stamps. no she uses stamps.com um, I use ShipSaver for that uh, I also use um, fit shipper for anything that uh, I want to send cubic priority and I have a video an earlier video where I talk about that and I show that she uses ship pirate or pirate ship pirate ship mm -hmm. pirate ship for that there's a few different ones um, fit shipper is a paid one I like the way they're set up better so I'm willing to pay five bucks a month for it but um, I'm pirate cheap. ship is free and you know whatever she, that's the first one she used so she prefers the way it's yeah set. it's about i mean it's the same pricing as the one that you yeah, yeah. i mean it's so, like cents if you're, you're off yeah. with the discount but yeah and then stamps.com is like the only company that will do um where you can do the international flat uh it's like the letter. international flat letter um because for all the other companies you can only do documents with that but stamps.com it's a whole big i don't really completely understand it, it has to do with i've only used it a couple of times it has to do with like unionizing and it's like this whole weird thing but basically um you can send stuff for a bit cheaper under certain parameters mm -hmm. i won't get into it and stamps is a free um it's free, stamps for, eBay. Is free for ebay sellers um there are different versions of of uh, the program i've i've been i don't I don't think I'm using the free eBay version of it. I have kind of an old version, but I've been using stamps for like, yeah. fifth, you know, 12 years or something. And I think I'm grandfathered in at a free. If you're in the Thrifty Adventures, um, was it Thrifty? No, it's, I think it's Kathy Terrell's group. She just recently uh, posted, which what's the name of her? It's like eBay stores, nothing but eBay stores. Yes. If you're in that group, she recently posted a link um, to getting stamps.com the, the free eBay version mm -hmm. um, because they, I think they don't advertise it anymore, but it is something that they still offer yeah, to eBay. It's, it, yeah, it's still there. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know the uh -huh. link, I'm sorry. But all of those um, all of those shipping apps, for the most part, you can connect directly to your eBay account. 
that makes it really easy for um, yeah my uploading. stamps my stamps one does not import i have to manually put in gotcha it but, does if you have the ebay version yeah um and then it automatically loads up the tracking when you buy it so yeah unfortunately we do have to use all these different things i mean it's great that they're out there but it gets a little ridiculous yeah. i've got like i do wish that yeah things yeah i wish that ebay integrated a little bit better with their shipping program and had all of the options available i wish they had cubic available i wish that we were able to ensure first class international you can no longer ship to a few places through eBay directly, but you can still sell to those places. So you have to go mm -hmm. outside of eBay, like Russian sometimes. Federation and stuff like that. Not always, but sometimes. I don't know what the difference is because sometimes I can ship to Russia and sometimes I can't. So. Yeah, it might be the different county or whatever they call it there. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, okay, so we do. All right, so I guess I'll do a couple. Yeah. Um, all right, so the first one I have is... This might seem a little strange to some people um, that I'm buying and flipping Gap, but this is a vintage Gap jacket. And it's it actually feels like it's almost like a wax cotton, like this um, way this kind canvas of canvas or something. Yeah, kind of canvasy wax cotton, but this is like a um, kind of a bomber jacket. Uh, it's got like this leather collar. Um, it is vintage. This is the tag. I want to knock over our coffee here. We're in a little bit of a tight spot. But this is the tag made in Korea. Um, it's priced at $10.99, but I got 20% off for this. It's got like a really cool, like the plaid lining. Um, this jacket, I mean, I should be able to sell it for like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Um, it's a really cool vintage style. So some Gap stuff, I mean, that's just another thing. It's like, is all Gap stuff gonna sell for a good amount? No, I mean, Gap's like a pretty mid-level mm -hmm. fashion thing. So um, but every once in a while, there are certain pieces that jump out, and hopefully I'll sell this relatively soon, and I can show you guys the results. But I think I'll be able to sell this for at least $50, so nice. Uh, the second thing I got, um, I think recently I talked about this, uh, the members-only jacket. The last one I showed you guys was, I think, a little bit of a darker gray. This is the lighter gray version. Now, this one, I don't think this is um, vintage. It doesn't have, like, the rainbow tag. I mean, it might be. This one's made in Thailand. I don't know. Um, but this is the lighter gray. And the thing about this light gray jacket is if you watch Stranger Things, there's a character in that his name is Steve. He's like, he starts out, he's the boyfriend of like the, mm -hmm. the sister of the main character. Um, he's super cool in his members only jacket. He's super cool. And he wears the light gray members only jacket. So, I mean, in general, members only sells pretty well. But this particular one, that's this light gray, um, I should be able to sell it because it is... Uh, from that show. Now again, I cannot, pretty big. I cannot put Stranger Things in the keywords, guys. And you can't either because unless it was literally from the show, that's exactly. keyword spamming. Exactly. Uh, but this might sit for a little bit, but it'll probably sell once we get closer to Halloween time mm -hmm. because there's definitely going to be people on that show is really popular. There's going to be people wanting to uh, dress up like the characters. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So you want to go ahead and show your next one? Sure. So um, I'm starting just because these are on top, but one of the things that, again, I am i don't know what it is with me in shoes lately, but between men's shoes and women's shoes, I like selling shoes because they're super easy to list and ship, and I don't like cleaning them, so I don't do that a heck of a lot unless they're, like, some people really clean them so that the mm -hmm. soles are perfect and stuff. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. Um, I mean, I clean glaringly obvious stuff. I'm not sending out stuffs on them, but. Um, so I kind of hit, like, the shoe jackpot in our first. Nuts. Our first savers that we went to, it was like nobody had looked at the women's shoes like ever. I, I don't know what it is, but I got some really good shoes. And I'm just going to show a small representation of the ones that I purchased. But um, how many pairs did you get? Uh, like 10. It was crazy. I got like 10 pair. Yeah. So um, this is a start. This is a, a pair. They're made in Italy. They are leather. And I didn't recognize the brand, but I grabbed them because it has a nice leather sole. And they're made in Italy and it's European sizing. And that generally is a good indicator on women's shoes of uh, it being something that is a quality shoe. Um, I'm trying to take the tag off right now. I apologize. I grabbed the wrong shoe so I can't see what the brand name is. And that's kind of defeats the purpose of me showing you the shoe. But I got 20% off of $8.99. And it's just um, basically, crap. All right, sorry. I'll have to tell you the name of the shoe after. Such language. I know. I know. I didn't get the, the sticker is stuck too, too tight on the leather sole. But it's not a it's it's a European brand and it's a brand sold in the UK. I just thought these were super cute. Uh, they've got this little heart dangle on, and it's like patent leather at the toe, and they're really nice leather ballet flats. Mm -hmm. um, but they're in really good shape. The soles get a little bit of wear, but not that bad. It, everything else is in great shape. Um, so anyway, I paid twenty percent off of eight ninety nine. The brand I have to add it to the details. I apologize, um, but the brand sells for around a hundred dollars a pair. Um, it wasn't a brand that I had recognized, but it is a brand that is popular in the, in the UK. So that was where I was finding this, the sales 
um, on the UK site. I was just, I was just laughing at uh, Allison. She said, "For the members only jacket, could you put Thranger strings in the title?" I would say, I would say probably not. But that's fine. Uh, somebody else said, um, "Carol wants to know if it would be keyword spammy if you just mentioned it in the description that's like the jacket he wears in the show." I wouldn't do it. I mean, you for the unless he physically wore it specifically, he wore that jacket. That actor wore that jacket. You probably shouldn't do that. It I, is possible if somebody had you, it, it could get pulled. I have used similar things where I've said, in you know, this is a jacket that is similar to something that some like that. I had a jacket that Blake Lively wore mm -hmm. in an episode of Gossip Girl, and that was why it had been really popular. And I did put that in the um, in the description, like this is the this is the jacket that that, that st is the style of what so-and-so wore. I, mean, I would be careful and about it, it in the title. It, could, it still could be taken down. So well, I, it's not a keyword because it's no. not in the title. So it's it's kind of a gray area. Yeah. I would say I think you're going to without it. But um, you know, most people who are searching for it, they know what they're looking for. So yeah. it shouldn't, you shouldn't need that. It's not like somebody's going to like stumble across and be like, whoa, this is from Stranger Things. I got to get it. So... All right, so this is another uh, really great uh, pair of shoes. I paid $12.99, so 20% off of $12.99. The brand name is Rangoni. This is another brand from uh, Florence. Um, I don't know if you can see in that. Look at the, the I hairs. Can see it. Yeah, it's pony hair. It's probably pony hair or calf hair, but it feels like pony hair. Oh, or calf. Um, okay, sorry. No. I didn't say cat. That was a Winnie. Oh, okay. that was a. Winnie. So um, these are in great shape and this brand sells very well. And I'm going to put this up, put these up for around $100 or so. I'd probably get about 75. But my favorite, my favorite, this is the first time I've actually found these in the wild. I was very excited. I paid $8.99. These are new without box. They are in, they have a sticker at the bottom. They're in fantastic condition. These are Tory Birch. <laughs> oh, so, I don't know anything about women's shoes, so. Yep, Tory Burch. Uh, there are these, you know, they've got a little patent leather on the toe, and they've got this little kind of like a felt or a wool quilted uh, mm -hmm. side, and they're just a, just a ballet flat. I have never found Tory Burch anything in a store. I'm and just Tory Burch usually sell for new. Well, the retail on these is well over 200 and it's just, it is also it's popular. Crazy. So like some of these are like vintage, or sometimes you find a great pair of shoes that are a little dated. These are very current and very popular. So like I said, somebody's sleeping at the wheel yeah. of savers. I don't know. And, and I've got like three or four other uh, pairs of shoes that were just fantastic high-end shoes. I didn't pay more than $10 for any of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, shoes are going to add some weight to the luggage going home, but I don't care. These are yeah. worth it. Yeah, we totally are filling our bags. We had, oh, yeah. Uh, because with Southwest, we flew Southwest, which you can take, um, you get two carry-ons for free. So we had two, or not carry-ons, sorry, two check bags for free. Mm -hmm. So we had two bags that we filled for just our personal stuff. And then we brought along a big duffel bag packed in our luggage. Yep. And then we actually ended up at one of the Salvation Armies buying another piece of luggage, which actually we needed another one anyway. So uh, we bought another one because we had already purchased so much stuff. So we were going to completely fill all four of our bags that we need to check. Um, but it's no cost um, to get that stuff home. So that's really good. Um, okay, so we're running out of a little bit of time here, but I got a couple more things I want to show. Um, I'm going to show this we're one. We're not running out of time. We've got some we time. got as much time we as we want. Three things for crying out loud. We got as much time as we want. All right, this one we got like 50 people watching right now. Very cool. Okay, so the, this next one, um, this is like a sweater, sweatshirt kind of thing. Um, the brand is Spider. So if you don't know this brand, this is definitely one that you need to be aware of. Um, spiders spelled with a Y. Um, they do a lot of, I guess, like winter gear, ski. a lot of like ski jackets, snowboard jackets, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, it's a higher end brand. So if you ever come across, especially the jackets, sell for quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can get them for a good price, very, very cool. This is considered a core sweater. It's called a core sweater. It's kind of like a pullover jacket. A lot of them are full zip. This one's half zip. Um, it was 15. That feels new. Yeah, yeah, it feels like, I mean, it feels like it's pretty much new, but. Anyway, it's fifteen ninety nine. I paid uh, got twenty five percent off for this one. This actually, there's two things that I got, and I'm going to be showing you guys where um, they were hanging on the end of an, uh, an aisle or a row that where they weren't supposed to be. So somebody probably had been carrying them around and then just dropped them off because they decided they didn't want them or didn't want to pay that much. Um, I always, whenever I see stuff like hanging on the end that doesn't belong there, I always go look at it because a lot of times it's something good that somebody was like, mm -hmm. oh, I want this, I don't know. 
Um, and there were two things I found like that. So yeah, so this is like just a really cool, it's got like a, it's like a really cool kind of like almost waffle knit um, thing going on. Uh, these ones sell for quite a bit new. I should be able to get $60, $80 for this, especially because I'm selling international. There's a good chance I'll be able to sell these international. Um, I'm telling you like inter if you're not doing your own international shipping, you are nuts. Um, 20% of my revenue over the last 12 months, 20%, you guys, like $20,000 international sales. And let me tell you, I don't, um, item numbers, transactions, not 20% because my average sale price for international sales is much higher. They tend to, they tend to buy the more expensive stuff. They'll pay more money out of pocket for it. Um, so this is something that good chance this will end up going international. Um, the other thing that was hanging on the end is this North Face hoodie right here. This is a new with tags. It's, I don't know how well the color is translating, but it's like a crazy. It's hunter orange. Bright. Yeah. Hunter orange. Neon hunters. Sleeves. Like you don't um, want to get shot deer hunting yeah. orange. This now this, I, I really paid a bit of money for it. Um, it was the tag says $25. Um, I paid 20, you know, it was 20% off of that. So I paid about 20 bucks for it. But here's the thing. It's new with tags, right? So that's one thing, but it's not just new with tags. It's actually a sample. Um, mm -hmm. So you can see that there. And so the thing about samples, if you don't know anything about samples, a lot of times, like anytime a clothing company, like whether it's shoes or clothes, whatever, um, what they'll do is they'll create samples and then they get passed around and they take notes on them. They decide like, are we going to sell this? Are we not going to sell this? Um, and so this may or may not ever have gone into production. Um, so sometimes it's a unique piece that you can't get anywhere else. And North Face is a really big brand right now. I and mean, they've been around for a long time. They were super popular in the nineties. Um, and they become, I think they've been consistently popular, but they've, because of the whole 90s streetwear thing, um, North Face is one of those brands that really does well. It's a little bit of a higher end outdoor brand. Um, they've been doing some crossover stuff with Supreme. Uh, so people love this brand. So I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to sell it for. This is a sample, I'll price it high. I don't know, I might be able to sell 80 to 100 bucks. Who knows? I can see the sunshine coming out today. Ooh, I'm pretty excited. Sunshine. All right, so that's good for me for now. Okay, so, um, it's been pretty rainy the whole time that we've been here, rainy and cold and mm -hmm. damp, and that really makes me sad because it's uh, New England is beautiful in the spring. Yeah, uh, it's everything's so bright and green, and the sun yeah. has come out so far. So we're going to something that happens to be outside. So yeah. I'm really excited that I hope it stays that way. Well, I, I told her last night. I said I'm pretty sure I'm never ever ever going to be warm again right. or not tired. Right. True. Because <laughs> I've been like freezing the whole time I've been here. All right, so this is something that I picked up at Savers. It was the 50% off. It was brand new, so it was 50% off of $8.99. This is just a what I would call a modest nightgown. It's um, it's flannel. It's really soft. It goes down to your knees. It's got the little eyelet uh, around the neck and some pin tucking in the front. Um, modest, comfortable. These are really comfortable granny uh, nightgowns. It's by a brand called Lands of Salzburg. Every time I find this pro this brand, I buy it, and it always always sells. So mm. this is what the what it looks like. It's new with tags, by the way. So it's Lands of Salzburg, um, and it's a really nice, well made brand. Um, this retailed for probably a hundred dollars um, with with new with tags. I paid four dollars for it. I'm going to list it for sixty nine, and I will probably sell it uh, at that price. So, yeah, I would never think to pick something like that up. It looks like, again, we're back to Laura Ingalls it's a, Wilder. It's, it's Laura Ingalls Wilder style, it, but they're, God, they're these big, huge, oversized, granny, um, super comfy Crazy. flannel nightgowns. But people love them, and this particular brand sells very well. And mm -hmm. a lot of the time, I haven't seen one in this little cute pattern with the birds on it, but usually you find them in, like, the red flannel plaid, and, you know, just they sell every time. I actually mm -hmm. found two. Uh, one was pre-owned and one is new with tags. I bought both of them and I'm going to sell them for good money. Very nice. Sin City Hustlers is in the house. Nice. Apparently he peeled himself out of bed and he's joining us now. Nice. Uh, and Allison uh, Big Drift Drift says the go back rack outside the dressing room has good stuff too. Yeah. Yes. I always check that too. I Especially for that. women's because for the most part, guys aren't doing going to check the go. They're know, not trying, trying to grab stuff on, on it. For the it, most part. Sure. I mean, every yeah. once in a while there'll be something good there, but women's clothing especially because they're usually trying stuff on. So, I mean, we each have just a couple more. I'm going to do one more and then you can do mm -hmm. one more. Okay, so this I picked up the savers, the first savers we went to. This is a Jams World dress. It's in a larger size, but it's real pretty, uh, real bright pattern. It's a size large. 
GM's World is a real popular uh, Hawaiian uh, tropical resort wear brand. This is the vintage GM's World tag. Nice. Right there. Beige and stuff like that before. Yep. And it is a size, oh, it's not a large, it's a medium, but it seems like a larger size medium. Anyway, it's made in the USA. I paid $8 for it. It was $9.99. I got 20% off. And I'll list this and sell this for about $69 as well. Um, it's real cute. It's in great shape. It has pockets. Oh, I love pockets, especially on dresses. So do a lot of people. Um, and it's just a nice classic style. And it's not, it's actually so pretty, I think. Um, so I think that one's going to sell really well. Mm -hmm. So I paid $8. I'll sell it for about $70. Yep. Well, we got Christiane's in the house now. She's in California visiting her sister. So apparently oh. we switched sides of the country. I guess so. So she's like, what, you're in Kentucky or something like that? I think that's where she is. I think so. We talked about the hot brown. Yes. Hot brown sandwich I want to have. Um, yeah, when we get back to Vegas, we'll warm right it's up. It's true. We Seriously, will. I, we will. I want that heat. Don't complain. All right. So uh, this is the, the main thing I got at one of the um, one of the Salvation Armies. Uh, it was 50% off. And I'm like, there's no way this would have lasted in Vegas. Uh, it would have sold at the regular price. It was priced at like $20. It's a little high, but um, I still would pick it up for $20. Uh, but I got it for $10. This is a racing jacket. Um, you should always pick these up and get them for a decent price. This one's a tied one. Um, a lot of times I always see, what's the other one that I've got? Like there's Home Depot ones. You the Home Depot lot. one, you find those a lot. I, this is the first time I've seen a tied one. Um, so It's a nicely made one. It's that, it's denim. It's, you know, it's like the brushed cotton. It's yeah, very it's nicely embroidered. Super, super embroidered. This one's in really nice condition. I don't even think it was worn very much. It smells nice. Smells like tied. It does, it does actually. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I haven't done any. Uh, this is the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Um, and even I though it has white cuffs, it's like not even dirty. Yeah, not, which is good. not dirty at all. So this one was sitting around at the very least a week because it was 50% uh, off. I don't know who the driver is. I will have to um, look that up. But I always that buy Chase these. Brand these, are very, yeah, these are very popular. Um, and it's an, it's an extra large, which is a good size. So, I mean, I'll probably be able to sell this for minimum $60. I would think, you know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even more. So, because it's, it's such a cool one. And like I said, I haven't looked up the comps yet. So, I don't know if there's like tons listed. Um, but these always sell really well. So, if you ever come across the racing jackets, they're popular, guys. People like their NASCAR. They're ugly as sin. I don't know <laughs> who buys them. But, hey, people do. There you go. All right. You can go ahead and. All right. So, I just have two more things. So, this is something that I picked up again. This was at the first Savers. Uh, she was actually in the men's department, and I thought she was done, so I grabbed this. I went into this um, the vest section. I love right. missing vests, but uh, I guess she missed that. I didn't. I hadn't looked it. at the vest section, so I don't think you were going to. You said you sometimes I do. Well, sometimes I'll circle back and I'll go look at the vests, and then sometimes I forget to. So she won with this one. So this is like a. Um, this is definitely a new vest. It's super well made. It's really. It's a good size. It. This is a. Um, like made in England, it's imported from England. It's a brand called Chrysalis. So uh, Chrysalis is, I didn't even know the brand. I just picked it up because A, it was made in England, which you don't find clothing made in England very mm -hmm. frequently at all, but also mm -hmm. it's very, very well made, heavy yeah. tweed. You can tell it's leather. Nice. You can tell it's an expensive. It looks like something that's gonna wear. Some people wear this to go fox hunting. I mean, that's really, it's, it's a, it's a high-end brand of um, hunting clothing. Um, and so I paid, 20% off of $12.99, and I'm going to list this for probably about $150. Mm -hmm. um, it's really well made. I love it. Very cool. Um, I can, it's somebody who looks very dapper. Mm -hmm. uh, Allison just brought up, uh, she's joking around about Paul Cantu. Let me tell you, if you want to learn more about streetwear and vintage streetwear, um, check out Paul Cantu on um, YouTube. He's really, really super silly. Mm -hmm. He's got a bit of a potty mouth. Okay, I'll tell you that now. Um, he's a little bit ridiculous, but he I has identify with the potty mouth. Yeah, but his uh, trip to the thrift um, series, and he's got like I think a couple hundred of them at this point. Um, is just him going to thrift stores, mostly in Houston, the Houston area, um, and he finds all kinds of awesome stuff. And if you pay attention to the kind of stuff that he finds, it's a lot of vintage '90s streetwear, like Tommy Hilfiger, or as he calls it, Tommy for your mommy. Um, and like just all kinds of stuff like that. Nautica, um, definitely. I think he regularly wears the racing jackets like this one. Um, mm -hmm. so he is a really, really good way, a really good source, uh, resource for checking out, um, what it is that people are into. 
Um, I watch him. I watch uh, the show by Ram 2 um, on YouTube. And then I also belong to a couple of um, vintage streetwear thrifting um, Facebook groups. So those are all like really good ways to learn brands. Um, so just tip. Yeah. This is my last share of the day. And this was another really good find. I'm like, I'm telling you, I, this is just a sampling of the stuff that I found and such high uh, prices for what I'm going to get for a lot of the stuff. And I, I would be thrilled to get a couple of these things in Vegas and I do pretty well, but there's some really good things. I was shocked at how good the prices were and that they were still in the rack again. So this was 50% off at Savers. I paid $3 and 50 cents. That's priced at 6.99. I hate that they staple everything. Yeah. That drives me crazy. Cause I gotta be real careful. Taking at least this out. one's knit. It's, I mean, it's, it's yeah, well, it's gotta be real careful. So this is a sweater. This is a high end sweater brand called Dale of Norway. Mm -hmm. Some people have talked about this before. I have never, uh, we have never on this show anyway. Uh, Dale of Norway is a really, really great brand of sweater. Um, they make clothing for men and women. This one has a little floral pattern to it. So I'm going to say it's probably a woman's uh, actually in the buttons are floral. So this is a big uh, like sweater type of like cardigan. cardigan. The front is that black that you see along the sides this is a very nice velvet. They've got heavy um, metal or pewter buttons and uh, it's a super thick wool sweater. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. It's in great condition. There's no pilling or anything like that. And I'm going to sell this for at least $150. And I've, I've actually had that brand before too with men's and uh, yeah, it sells really, really well. It sells well. really well. It sells really high. It'll, I'll sell it for at least $150. It's a size large. I haven't quite checked the comps in this particular type of pattern. Uh, I might even list it higher, but minimum 150 And again, it was 50% off, which means it was sitting around for at minimum a week at six ninety nine. And I didn't even know it was Dale of Norway. I just was, again, I talked so. about feeling stuff. It was for me, it was I was going through the rack and I felt this super thick sweater. I went, Oh, that's really well made. And then saw the label and went, Oh, I did know the brand. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't one that I, I, but even if I hadn't known the brand, I probably would have at least looked it up based on yeah. how it felt. Absolutely. And that's all I got for today. That's all you got? I mean, mm -hmm. I got a couple of t shirts. I'll show this one t shirt I got. I, one of the things I love about like um, sourcing in like new areas is, you know, like when I lived in Oregon, I would always come across like Oregon State stuff, University of Oregon, um, you know, just like local teams, mm -hmm. you know, Blazers and stuff like that. And now that I'm in Vegas, it's like, you know, I'm always finding um, Golden Knights and, uh, you know, whatever they're, you know, University of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and so here now I'm on the East Coast. And so, of course, I'm going to find, uh, I was hoping I would find some sports stuff. I didn't find a ton. I found like a ton of Patriot stuff, but it was all like the NFL brand. If you do any sourcing with like um, streetwear, like uh, sportswear stuff, the straight like NFL brand is kind of like low end. It's not mm -hmm. like that great. It's not with like Patriot, starter. Or, with Patriot stuff, you might have wanted to grab it anyway because mm, it wasn't that sells really well no matter who makes it i don't know why but anyway it wasn't really anything was like rabid yeah New England, we are rabid and that's why you're not finding a ton of it because they don't let go of their crap they're still right. wearing the stuff they bought absolutely so i did find this one t-shirt um it was 4.99 20 percent off of that i was excited about this it's a uh, what year is it from 93 it's like a 93 um hall of fame bowl between boston college and university of tennessee um <laughs> So I was excited that I found like, at least I found like one cool vintage sportswear thing. And again, it's cool because it's like, you know, Boston College. So I got to have, you know, something that's kind of local to here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I was excited to find this. It's cute. I didn't find a ton of uh, vintage t-shirts, but if you watch the sourcing video put up, there are some t-shirts I found that I think you'll be excited to see. As you can see, she was very impressed with the t-shirts that I found. I found some good stuff, guys. All right. We're over an hour now, and we've got some other stuff to do. We've got a lot going on today. We've got a mm -hmm. special event we have to go to, which is why I have my fancy tie on. And she has her fancy baseball tee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dressed up, but whatever, you know, I'm trying to stay classy, guys. Uh, anyway, so thanks for joining us for our Sunday live haul. Um, and again, next week, we will be going back to the regular time of 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, but we really appreciate everybody coming and joining us here. Looks like we had a decent turnout. I think we had over 50 people, um, which is pretty good considering uh, we, we came on so early. Um, but yeah, so we really appreciate it. And uh, if you are not in the Boss Facebook group, please Get join the there. group. 
We have lots of fun there. We do our listing challenge every Wednesday, our virtual listing party, boss up and list. And you want to be a part of that. It's a really cool um, way to motivate each other and keep people on top of things. Plus I try, well, I've missed it a couple of days, but generally I have daily posts um, talking about uh, getting your listings done and getting your listings up for the day. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, so you want to be in that group. And again, if you're not, it's also, yes. and I wanted to say, it's also an amazing group where we talk about business. That's the whole mm -hmm. point of when we started the group or with Teresa mm -hmm. we started the group was that we wanted to have a group that talked a little bit more about the business side yes. of eBay. And while that is not the most exciting side, that is a necessary aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. And um, so we talk about business questions. We talk about accounting methods. Um, about Teresa, taxes. Taxes. Teresa is the queen of that type of stuff. Yep. She is the numbers geek. That's her That's her name mm -hmm. on um, on Instagram and on Twitter. And there's a reason for that. That's, that's her passion. And she's really good at talking about yeah. it. And yes, it's really dry material, but that's, the nature of business, right? We all love the buying and the selling and the flipping, right? And so which numbers, is, which is why we do this show because we know that people like to see, like they like to see hauls, they like to see what's sold, yeah, and they, they like the part where you get to go out and buy stuff. We get that, so we do this show because we know that that yeah, we want to we want to balance. It's just balance. fun. That's just fun, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, we got the business side there too, as well as you know the listing part, which for a mm -hmm. lot of people there's a big struggle in finding a good balance and making sure that you're listing enough. Which is why I do the hashtag two or two challenge. Um, which is basically the idea behind it is that every day now again sometimes even we fail at this because we right now we're visiting rhode island so it's a little harder to keep up hard. the idea is that every day you try to list at least two new items mm -hmm. or if you don't even have time for that you end your two oldest listings um, hit sell similar and then rework them so you can have a fresh new listing and i actually think you've been able to do that Almost every I've done day. that every day, and I actually did four brand new listings this morning. I See, know. and I'm gonna get a few listings up, but she's been at least getting her um, so similars up. Done, so yeah. I haven't succeeded in that. So, but that's our whole thing. So every day I do like a post of the two or two to see if people mm -hmm. have been doing that. It's just a really good way to keep everybody motivated because you gotta keep listing if you want to keep selling. Yeah. Um, so again, join the Boss Facebook group. Super cool group, super cool community. All the people in there are really awesome. We keep things positive. We're all about um, building each other up, celebrating our successes. Supporting and other sellers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and if you're not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the little notification bell icon that's next to the subscribe button um, to make sure that you are getting... Uh, you are talking fast. She's like... Blah, 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 blah. I'm very <laughs> apologetic for that. But if you would like to get notifications, but wait, there's more. So that when I go live or I put up new content, you will get a notification of it telling you that you need to come and watch the new stuff. Make sure you hit that notification. The coffee icon. kicked in. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, anyway, appreciate you guys being here today, and we will see you later. So please get out there and boss up. Bye, everybody. Bye.